Hello and welcome to another Super Circuit Maker tutorial video where I have built a 4-bit shift register. To be more specific, I have built one parallel in serial out shift register here. 4 bits, you can see there's 4 blocks. And over here we have a serial in parallel out 4-bit shift register. And if you don't know what a shift register is, well, basically it is, um, this is a 4-bit, so it means it can store 4 bits of data, 3, 2, 1, and 0. And if I shift, perhaps I can, well, let's see, 1, 0, 1, 0. And I start the circuit, that data will be shifted to the right, so we get over here 1010 zero, zero. and we can change it to whatever we want perhaps 1001 zero, zero, one. and we start the circuit and the data will be shifted to the right so we get the same data here as we had here so these are the inputs we load it into the register and then over here we have the, another register that decodes this or just shifts it to the right and this will give us the output. You can have basically how as many as you want. And the only drawback is that the more you have, the slower the system will be. And you can expand this in lots of different ways. So you can, as you can see here, uh, the data is shifted one by one. You can synchronize this with perhaps with the first clock cycle and so all of the data will be output at the same time, for example. Now they're just shifted. Uh, perhaps you can sync it with the uh, enable signal over here. This is a purple enable signal that will, in the first clock cycle, we will load the data. And in the four other clock cycles, we will shift the data. And you could move this one all the way over here as well and sync it to the output. I mean, you can do whatever you want, but anyway, this is how it works. So I'll go through exactly how it works. Uh, and I'll do that in another world. If you're interested in that, it will be quite theory heavy. If not, well, you'll find the links to all the important circuits to make the shift register, these ones in the video description and read there for more information as well. This is a special circuit that I'm not too keen on sharing fully um, because I'm afraid it will crash due to all the circuits on circuits. But continue to watch the video and I'll explain everything. So everything starts with the RS latch. We've covered this before. Basically what it does is that if you get an input from one side we will get one output and then if we get the input from the other side we'll get the output on the other side so that's the basic part of everything and then so you can have that part is over here uh, by the way i have some really useful links if you want to follow along more detailed uh, with with how it works um, they're in the video description of course and then we have to, to make the D latch, that's for the for data. We have an AND gate here, an AND gate here, and an inverter here. So basically, this is down here. We have the enable. So if it's off, the data signal will not pass through. It will just uh, the circuit will stay in its previous state. Um, I'm not gonna lag in this world. Set it to off. And then we flip the uh, enable to on. Then we'll jump to, uh, th then the output will follow the input. So this is the main output and this is the inverted output. So as you can see, it will follow the signal, but as soon as we turn this off, then it will stay in its state regardless of the input signal. That's a D latch. Then we can upgrade that to uh, D flip-flop. Basically the only difference is that we have a pulse detection circuit down here. 
you can see the input down here and here and the delay in the middle I think it's yeah it's only one tick basically what this does is that this circuit will only be active on uh, the enable signal will only be active on the falling edge so that means that if we have this to off then nothing should happen right exactly like before the outputs are the same if we have this to on then in the previous version this one this output followed this input but it doesn't not until we go from on to off and in the falling transition where we get the 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 output so if you take a closer look on these redstone torches they will actually blink for just a short for one tick basically and that's where all the magic happens so if you turn it to off and then we go from on to off then the uh, the signal will toggle and now we have the, the basically this can I say basically a lot to I this can be a button since we do this always on the falling flank turn it on and then hit the button and then it will flip and with that with this D flip flop we can make the basic shift register so here I have four D flip flops in a row I have the clock down here and the data input up here so now if we turn this on I, and I hit the button once then we'll get that input to the other side if I then turn it off and I clock again then the data will jump one one step to the right but this one was zero so zero will be inserted here so we get zero one now if i play, do two clocks in a row with a high signal then we'll get one one in the end and then we'll turn it off i can actually remove this because this isn't very useful see it shifts every time i clock it will shift and this is the data that will be shifted. And this is important. We need the flip-flop. And that means that the D-latch is in a, has a pulse detector. We need that to make a shift register. If we would only use the, the D-latch. Now, I've done the same thing, but we don't have a clock here then as soon as i turn this one on the clock signal will be turned on then all of these will just pass everything through so it's not a shift register so let's remove this and never talk about it again we need a flip-flop to make the register and the clock is the important part here So now we can move ahead to make, so basically this is the, uh, the receiving part. This is the serial input and I get a parallel output here, right? So now we can take it to the next step and that is to make a loading circuit for our parallel input. So I want to have, this is the next setup and here we have the parallel input here. 1001 and this is the receiving part that we already seen 1001 and to make this work we have two circuits per bit the second circuit with the green clock here is exactly the same as this one it's a normal d flip flop with the green so the green one this one is the same thing, same circuit. But this loading part is what we see here. So it's a load circuit or a multiplexer. It will, on the enable signal here, if we have the, the, the control signal low, 
then we will simply uh, then the output this is the output will follow the uh, the top trace so that's the data input see up here the blue one going into from the top this is the data input so if this is high then this is high and if it's low then the output is low but as soon as we turn the control signal to high then it doesn't matter what this is because it, the output will follow the serial input instead. So here we have the so data input from top, serial input from the left, serial output on the right, and the shift, the load, the control signal from the bottom. And this is a very simple circuit. We have an AND gate up here. And we have an AND gate here, and we have an inverter here. If it's on, then it's the serial input from here. See? So that's the lower one. And if it's off, it's the top one. So that means that as soon as we, we need the first clock pulse needs to be low. So this is the control signal. And let's change this to something. 0101. We have one clock pulse to load the data into the to the loading circuit. Basically, that's into the into the um, into the D flip flop. And then we turn the the control signal to high, and we clock one, two, three, and four. That will give us 0, 01, 0, 01, exactly like the input. But we need this to be low for the first clock pulse. So 0, 0, 0011, 1, load it. And then we clock four times. 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we have the output again. So of course we can automate that and I have done a circuit to do that. This is, a, this is a five pulse circuit. And what this does, it we will clock five times and no more, no less. Um, I haven't done much about this. This is a memory cell up here. I yeah, I did the automatic counter, I think, uh, where we used a system like this. So we have a memory cell up here. And for every pulse we get here, we will add, we'll divide with a self, that means we get one here, and then we'll add one to the memory. So for every pulse, we'll add one. And then we take the signal, subtract, subtract it with this uh, constant, and this, once we're done, we'll turn everything off, reset the, uh, the, the memory, and then we'll send uh, a signal to the outside. So basically this is how it looks. Um, let's see, now it's turned off. We have a signal here telling us that we are done. We have, a, the, this is the control signal from this circuit. We started here. One, two, three, four, five. It's set to four, but it will output one more clock pulse than uh, then the constant is set to. And this constant should match the number of bits in the register. So let's see this one more time. One, two, three, four, five. And then this signal goes high again. This yellow one is high. Uh, it's the same one as this one. Uh, I needed it to be Normally it's output to the right, uh, you can see it here, the, this one, this white goes around. And when this is high, it will disable the pulsar. When, and when it's low, when I flip this, then this is low, and then the pulsar will, will run, and then everything will be automatically shut down, and it will stop pulsate. So this is how it looks. 
Uh, orange down here goes in, that's the start signal. We will have a signal going out to the white, telling us that right now it's a stop, stop mode, so to say. It will disable the pulsar. This is zero, not running, and we'll have no output either. So when we start it, get one, two, three, four, and one more, and then everything will be shut down, and this is the shutdown signal. So now we can actually go back where we, uh, and I can describe the finalized setup, uh, and perhaps you can copy that. Okay, so let's go through this, the final part, this one. Everything from here to the right is exactly what we saw in the other world again, so we don't need to cover that. This one is the clock circuit, the five pulse thing. And it's controlled by this ender pulsar, and it's set to, oops, not like that. It's set to 15 ticks. And then we have two pulse circuits here. So, and they are the normal pulse, the, this one. So if we turn it on, it will output one pulse and then it will turn off again. And I have some lags, sometimes it's not showing. But this is exactly the one I've used in the, uh, the flip-flop. If you recognize this part, I just added one extra tick of delay but it's the one input here and here and then the output. So this means that as soon as I hit this button, we'll get one pulse here going into this resonator. It is set to, not like that, it's set to 20 ticks and the ender pulsar is set to 15 ticks. So the first pulse, the first clock pulse, so to say, will be output and then this one will be uh, turned on for one pulse. And that means that this orange signal from the button will send after 20 ticks extra, so to say, will send the signal up here to this lever. And this is the control signal to the uh, for the loading part. So the first pulse should be with this low and then turn on. So now if you look carefully, you will see that this one will be low for the first clock pulse, and this is the clock over here, and then this will flash, and this will flash briefly to tell us that we have, we have a signal on the orange line. And that will flip this lever, and then the rest of the four clock pulses will be with the purple low. All right, ready? That was quite hard to see, perhaps. And then we're, when we're done, the control signal, you remember, same control signal uh, that controls the, the ender pulsar, will send another pulse with orange again up here, and that will flip the lever once again back to the... Uh... Oh, now it's correct. It was, uh, for some reason, the wrong <laughs> in the wrong mode. Uh, so the, here you can see the first pulse, We'll turn it to. We'll turn it on after the first clock pulse, and then after the final clock pulse, it will go back to this state. Right? Did you follow that? So basically, that's it. I can share this. Uh, you can probably do it in a much better way instead of having two pull circuits um, flipping this one. But the whole idea with this is to keep the first clock pulse out of five with the purple one low, and then with the, re the rest four will be with its high. And then we can get all in one system like this. One, zero, one, zero, hit it. And we'll get it over here. All right, I hope that was possible to follow. It's quite theory heavy when it comes to this level. Um, it's a really fun build. I hope it will be useful at some point. Um, 
haven't really decided for what yet, but I'm sure it will be useful for someone. <laughs> if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them and find all the information in the description. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.